What's going on guys, The Inhuman Beatdown, and I'm back with another Real Thoughts. This is the series where I take a extra look at something I finished and give kind of my extended thoughts on it. Today we're having a look at Dante's Inferno. Now very similar with uh, Thor, God of Thunder, Dante's Inferno gets, I think in my mind, excuse me, um, unfairly judged as just a God of War knockoff. And I mean, admittedly, yes, it has mechanics that are very similar to God of War. Which is hack and slash and quick time events. It's God of War was not the first game that fucking did this. Just FYI. Just just throwing that out there. Like, yes, God of War may be the one you remember it, but hey, news uh, news flash. A lot of games are copies of everything else. If you think something is original, chances are they just took something and modified it and it turned out to be good. Because last time I checked, I don't remember Kratos fucking flashing a long-range attack constantly at enemies, but hey, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I'll quickly go over story before I hit game mechanics like I usually do. So for the story, it's decently okay. The, f uh, an interesting struggle of watching Dante Alighiero, who is now portrayed as a crusader instead of being the poet like he was in the book, um, as he journeys across the seven... Yeah, that's it. It's been a while since I've had to memorize the layers of hell. Um, the the multiple layers of hell. That's how I'll get around that. Uh, to save Beatrice, the one he loves, and stop Satan. Although that last part is kind of loose, and I'll explain why. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. All the set pieces are definitely interesting. What really helps it is that Virgil, your guide, albeit through optional dialogue will explain bits about the level about why hell looks this way with actual quotes straight from the book which could honestly be seen as lazy writing but hey uh you know it's decent he explains certain things like oh this is why it's the way they boil in an ocean of blood or stuff like that that's pretty neat interesting takes on a lot of the character designs and stuff like that like seeing uh Cleopatra be this giant seductress like lady fucking thing in the lust level uh Mark Antony being inside of her mouth and stuff like that um I know I know some people got really pissed off when the game first came out not like the let's play when it first came out when they heard that Cerberus was going to be in the game and they got super pissed off and found out it's like this worm creature thing you're like that's not a fucking three-headed dog well jackasses read the book Fucking in Dante's Inferno, Cerberus is described as the Great Worm. Spoilers. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just weird. But yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. These set pieces are cool. Some of the enemy designs are kind of sometimes, um, but for the most part, a lot of the set pieces are interesting and unique. I think the only parts I don't particularly like are heresy because it's very closed in and I don't particularly like that area. It's one of those things that's better described than actually looking at it. And fraud. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I explicitly said why I don't like fraud in the video. Uh, for those who didn't watch it and are just watching this, uh, fraud is basically just because of how fraud works in the book, it's basically this entire... Fraud covers an entire layer in hell, but it has like 12 or 14 subsections for each kind of like frauder, frauder? That's a word. Yeah, that's that's possibly a word maybe. Uh, or for like different layers of fraud. So it's like, you know, leading someone on, telling lies, other crap for different punishments. Their interpretation of the game was basically just mini games. It was, hey, do this thing that maybe possibly pertains to the sin. It doesn't really do it anyways. So it was basically just 14 sections of Beatrice saying some bullshit and then having to do like this. Protect these people. Get this kind of combo. Hey, do this without getting hit kind of crap. And it felt really, really fucking lazy. It had no set pieces. Fraud was boring as fuck. That is arguably the worst part of all the levels, but not the worst part of the game. The worst part about the game I fucking hate is, ironically, our two main characters. I hate Beatrice and Dante. They are both fucking annoying, and they are both dumb as bricks. Oh, boy. So for the story, I think it's okay, but it's one of those things where they're stupid for plot convenience. Because these two seem like 
pretty decent characters. We're never really told that much about a lot of their backstories and stuff like that. But, uh, they make some stupid decisions. Like, the entire plot is kicked off because Beatrice makes a deal with Satan that Dante will stay faithful to her while he's away in the Crusades. Spoilers, he doesn't. Because apparently the fucking bishop or whatever absolves them of all their sins, quote, quote. And of course it doesn't work because that's not how that works. Then why do I go to confession? Or maybe he was a fake bishop. I don't, I don't, I don't really know how absolving people of sins works and neither does the game. So <laughs> anyways, um, but yeah, so Dante is portrayed as kind of, well, Dante is portrayed as whatever the fuck the game wants him to be portrayed as. Uh, God, I'm trying to think in, uh, uh, like in certain things, he's just like, oh, what just happened? I do not know. And then others are just like, I'm vile and evil and ugly and disgusting. And it's like, but I love you, Beatrice. You are the only one for me. You are the only one I will ever need. It's just, his character is so inconsistent. It's so annoying. <laughs> just, I hate him so much. He's just all over the place. It's like, he clearly wants to do good. He's tried to learn not to be fucking evil because his dad is a total fucking scumbag. But he just ends up doing these really shitty things for really no explained reason. He doesn't... They don't really give him any reason to it. It's like, oh, the father absolved us of our sins. It won't matter. It's like... Is that really all you think about? Like... I mean... I, I understand the whole sins thing is all about with, like, you know, being good with God and shit, but... I mean, I like to think that if you're still, like, absolved of your sins and you're still a fucking asshole that you're not gonna get into heaven. <laughs> I'm not the four, I'm not, I'm agnostic, so I'm not exactly the forerunner on that information, but hey, that's just my interpretation of it, but yeah. So Dante's a total piece of shit, <laughs> who's just like, fuck it, I'll believe what anyone tells me. Yeah, fuck it, I'll have sex with this whore, because whatever, it doesn't matter, I don't have a beautiful wife question mark waiting at home for me or anything and Beatrice is dumbass is just as stupid I am a good Christian girl hey baby you want to make a deal with dev with the devil himself okay like that's my entire problem with her character is like this supposed really nice Christian I assume Christian or Catholic take your pick of uh religions. I don't actually know what they are. I guess Catholic, maybe, because they're the Crusaders? No? No, the Crusaders were Christian. Fuck it, I don't know and I don't care, and it's not the point. Anyways. Uh, my point is, though, it's like, I don't think any kind of, like, woman of a pious nature, or of any kind of, like, religion and spir spiritual mentioning, and she's supposed to be, like, untainted and whatnot. Oh, that doesn't make sense, because technically she had sex with Dante. That doesn't that, that not make her ever... <laughs> I'm unraveling more of the story as I try to explain this. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, so... She basically makes a deal with Lucifer, Satan himself, that, like, Dante will be faithful to her. And surprise, he isn't. But it's like, I have to question. Technically, in doing this, in making this deal with, uh... Satan, she was so full of pride that he would, like, fucking be true to her or whatnot. It's like, you fucking committed more sins taking up this deal than you would have been like, Nah, I don't want to know if my man cheated on him or anything like that. And it's like, it's fucking Satan! Who makes a bet with Satan?! Like, there's literally, I think, something in the Bible about resisting the devil's temptations! You literally fucking took the devil's temptations! So yeah, the story is just plot convenience all the way through. I'm not gonna even pretend to understand about Lucifer's plot of 
Corrupting Beatrice or some other shit. By the way, Corrupted Beatrice is the most wasted character in here. She gets corrupted and she doesn't do nothing except talk shit during fraud where apparently you absolve her and she fucking goes to heaven because an angel takes her up. And then that leads to the fucking final part where it's like, oh hey, I've rescued Beatrice. I don't really have a reason to stay here. Now nah, I'm gonna go fight Satan. Why? That literally has no purpose. There's literally no explanation as to why Dante did this. I guess maybe for revenge sake? I don't fucking know. But in all, all he does is fucking set Lucifer free and he's like, I can go back to paradise! <laughs> and then bullshit happens where all the absolved souls fucking like bind him again and then absolve Dante of his sins or whatever. I don't fucking know. Fucking fuse and ass bullshit yeah that's that's the fucking plot of the game that's and then it's set up hard for sequel bait but it never came i don't think the game sold well enough to get that mechanics wise it is kind of god of war it's very hack and slash with like skill trees and stuff the only thing i don't fucking like is that depending on what you do like if you punish or absolve people will depend on what points will go into what if you get a lot of punish you can upgrade the scythe if you get a lot of absolve you can upgrade the cross Fucking, if I proved anything during the fucking playthrough, it's that the cross is the way to go. It's fucking long range attack and has the most broken shit on it. <laughs> the only reason I started upgrading the scythe at the end was because I ran out of fucking points and shit I wanted for uh, that. And like a lot of moral choices in games, it's better to go with all one first than do the others. Uh, added bonuses of the nice little Easter eggs of finding like other damn souls that are mentioned in the books, such as Sammy Ramis, Boudicca. Uh, fucking, uh, Mordred, that was it, uh, in the areas and being able to absolve or punish them. They basically just act as, like, experience founds. It's decent. The combat is okay, but, like I said, you spam the cross, and even on the enemies that you can't spam the cross, you can fucking beat them up a little bit, or there are tricks around it to where you can still... There are tricks to where even if you haven't upgraded the scythe completely, you can still... Still take care of them and then just cross everyone else. The cross is the most overpowered thing in that. And there's no reason not to use it. But yeah, the gameplay is okay. Uh, but nothing revolutionary. The game itself is just kind of alright. Uh, I played it mostly just because I was interested in kind of the uh, the more aspect to it. The... Um, Oh, what is it? The uh, the lore behind it and stuff like that. Because I it, it got me interested enough that I read the book during the time that it was taking for the game to release. I never got around to reading the other two in the in the Divine Comedy, but yeah, um, it was interesting and I liked it. I don't. I, I know they sequel baited it, but I have no idea how they would try to pull off a second or third game without it just getting convoluted and stupid. Because. Frankly, this one was already convoluted and stupid, but it's interesting and if you like the hack and slash style of gameplay, you'll feel right at home here. Um, although, of course, if you are an overly religious person and you take offense at the slightest deviation from your holy prophet manual, you may want to stay the hell away from this. Haha, <laughs> I'm on brand. I'm not on brand. On topic. There we go. I don't have a brand. I suppose that is my brand. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's really all there is to say about that. Uh, I was gonna say fun, then I was gonna say interesting, but I'm like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's an experience. If you like it, rent. If you think you'll have fun with it and you like the heck and slashy stuff, rent it or maybe pay five bucks for it. You won't feel cheated at or anything. There's a multiplayer mode, too, if you buy the DLC for it, but fuck me if I'm doing that, and I think it's dead anyway, so yeah. But that's gonna be it for now, guys, so until next time, I will catch you all later. Asta.